their statesmanship looked beyond the passing moment and stretched away in strength into the distant future. They seized upon eternal principles and set a glorious example in their defense. Mark them. These words, my friend, were spoken by none other than Frederick Douglass, referring to the founding fathers in his speech, the meaning of the 4th of July for the Negro. This was delivered in Rochester, New York, July the 5th, 1852. Well, God bless you. I'm Bishop Patrick L. Wood Sr., and I am excited. I pray that you're having a great day, and I have in my hand a book that you got to get. You have to have this one. Every reader has to have this book in their library. Now, let me say for full disclosure, the author of this book has no idea that I'm doing this. I am not on his payroll. I get no kickback, no pay, no recognition, nothing like that. I just want you to have this book because it's going to bless you real good. This book is written by Robert L. Woodson uh, Sr., Bob Woodson, a tremendous man of God. And I tell you, this book, Red, White, and Black, Rescuing American History from Revisionists and Race Hustlers. This book will bless you, and if you happen to be watching and you are an African-American, you really want this book because it's going to bless you in terms of, uh, uh, of, of our, our, our history. And, you know, we hear so much about the legacy of slavery in America, but, my friends, that is true, but it's not the only legacy of this great land of ours. And I want you, I implore you to get this book by Robert Woodson. He is a tremendous man. And I, I tell you, once you begin to read it, you won't be able to put it down. He's an indispensable, listen, an indispensable corrective to falsified versions of black history presented by the uh, 1619 Project Racial Activist Money Hungry Diversity Consultants. You want this book. It is, it is uh, detailed. It is a very easy read. It's easy to follow. And I'll tell you something. It is quite uplifting. And it makes you proud to be an American. And it helps you realize that you're truly blessed. Whether you're black, white, um, uh, Hispanic, uh, uh, Asian, whatever your nationality may be, you are blessed. You've won life's lottery to be born in America, in a country that was founded, not perfect, but in its founding documents, acknowledges God, acknowledges the God of the Bible, acknowledges that, that we're depending upon him uh, for our rights. See, our rights, my friends, do not come from government. They come from God. He's the one who has granted unto us certain inalienable rights among them, the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thank God for America. Thank God for being saved. And thank God for you. Now, my friends, uh, we're coming up on uh, this weekend, uh, 9-11, the 20-year uh, anniversary of something that took place 20 years ago, on the 11th of September in New York, in Pennsylvania, and in Washington, D.C., we lost almost uh, 3,000 souls, uh, uh, counting the terrorists, 19 of them, and um, good people lost their lives that day, brave people lost their lives that day. Brave uh, police officers, brave firemen, brave people on the streets, brave Americans, people of every stripe, lost their lives that day. The Twin Towers fell. You know the story. I don't have to uh, uh, go over it detail for detail. You know about the plane uh, that flew into the uh, the Pentagon, you know about the plane uh, that crashed over the Pennsylvania area. You're well aware 
what a day it was. And uh, all of us can remember who old enough where we were on that day. And here we are 20 years later. And uh, on the 20th anniversary, it is a bittersweet anniversary because on, on one hand, when you look back, uh, you can't help but be thankful that we've been protected, first of all, by the Lord, by the Lord for the last 20 years that it hadn't happened again. And, and we also thank God for our brave men and women who serve in uniform, who have uh, paid untold prices to keep us safe. Uh, and, and, and we thank God for them. And yet we're in a situation today and, uh, and, and there's enough blame to go around to, to everybody where 20 years later in Afghanistan, the Taliban is stronger than ever. They have $84 billion worth of our weapons, $84 billion. We've made them stronger than they've ever been. And uh, they are yet our enemy. They, they too will celebrate victory. Can you believe it? Uh, over America uh, this Saturday. My friends, we need to pray. We need to seek the Lord as never before. And we need to pray that God bless us and that God keeps us. We need his favor. On one hand, I think it's a good thing that we're flying desperate, Afghanis, refugees, seeking solace and asylum, many we're bringing here. And on the other hand, I have grave concerns. Have they been properly vetted? Are we bringing in terrorists? There are reports that uh, in, in Fort Hood or various places where they are being held, that they're leaving, that they call an Uber and just drive off and never come back. Well, who are these people? Where are they going? What are their plans? Are we importing uh, hijackers and people who are hostile to America? Are we bringing them in, flying them in, and allowing them to go free? Is it wise to continue to leave our southern border open as it is today? I'm telling you, I don't want to play politics with this. I don't want to go tit for tat, Democrat, Republican, Republican, Democrat. I want to call on the believers because what we need as never before, we need the favor of God. We, we need God to move and cause our elected officials to make wise decisions. And I'm a big believer. I'm a big believer in this. And I believe you are too. Uh, that God said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. We need our land healed. We need the hand of God as never before. So let us seek the Lord. Let us call on the Lord. Let us pray for our nation and pray for the world because we need him as never before. Hey, and why are you praying? Just know that that is determined will be done. The thing that the Bible predict will happen in these last days it's got to take place. And for the believer, Jesus said for us not to worry. He says for us not to be depressed. Don't be afraid because the end is not yet. And he talks about things that has to be. And we are told to lift up our heads because our redemption draweth nigh. And I am excited about that. Now, I want to invite you to join me tonight because I'm excited about our Bible study uh, right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And I want to give a great big thank you to the saints who show up every Thursday night for our Bible study and our many, many, many friends online from all over. Over, We hear from you. Thank God for you. Thank God for your prayers. Thank God for your support. Thank God for you. And I want to tell you something that you win. You, you're winning. The, the, the Lord placed this on my heart as I, as I bring this to a conclusion. In my considering what I would say to you today, the Lord put on my heart to remind someone that there, there's some people who are watching right now who needs to hear this, whether you're here in Raleigh or listening from, uh, 
uh, Miami, Florida, uh, 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 Seattle, Washington, uh, in and out of the United States. We hear from people everywhere. I want to tell you something. The Lord said "Put t- for me to tell someone today, you win. Someone, some person, somebody out there, many of you are going through right now an evil day. You're going through a time of intense persecution, a time of intense attack. The enemy is trying to shake you. The attack is being manifested in various ways. Some, it's a physical illness. Others, the enemy is trying to pull you away from Christ to cause you to doubt the scripture. I was watching a a, a video clip that was sent to me the other day and I was listening to a silly man, a silly man trying to cast doubt on the scripture. And I thought to myself, what do you have left? Five years, 10 years, maybe 15 years more left to live, more or less. You're just a puny human being. And yet you want me to believe your words and doubt the word of God, attacking the validity of the King James version of the Bible. Well, let me tell you something. I believe the Bible. I believe the King James version of the Bible. I believe the Bible. Every chapter, every verse, and every line, I am convinced that the Bible is the Word of God. It is the only written, infallible, inerrant Word of God. Holy Word of God. The Bible doesn't simply contain the words of God, but the Bible is the Word of God. And there are people today who are trying to pull people away from the Bible. Don't you leave God's word. Don't you stray. Don't you go into another discipline, faith, nor doctrine. Hey, that uh, hypnosis won't help. Yoga is not going to help. Going to visit a root worker certainly won't help. Stay with God. Stay in the Bible. Stay on your knees. Your answer is around the corner. Some people are going through some terrible, tough times with family members. They're trying to put pressure on you. Whatever the case may be, however it is being manifested, pressure on the job. You know, people are being pressured now to take the vaccine. Well, my position has always been that decision is left up up to every individual. But I tell you what. I am not for people trying to make other people's lives harder, more difficult, putting stress on people, violating the Nuremberg Codes, the 14th Amendment and everything else. All of a sudden, it's no longer your body, your choice. All of a sudden now you're supposed to have to just acquiesce and you can't can't afford to have a differing opinion. You see pastors who are telling people to do this or not to. Here, I believe it's left up to the individual. At the upper room, we leave it up to the individual and let them, we give them the information and let people choose and people make their choices and their choices are private. But I am opposed to all of this pressure that is being placed on people. And I want to say to you, if, if, uh, if, if, it, if, if your, if your leading is this way, then stand your ground and, uh, uh, and watch God deliver, watch God come through for you. So there are many things going on, but the Lord told me to tell you that you win. The enemy is trying to confuse you on issues of morality, trying to make you think that people like me, well, they're too hard. They're too harsh. They're, they're, they're too hard. They're too, uh, oh, we're not hard. We're just telling the truth. We're not unloving. The most loving thing that you can do is to tell a person the truth. And the truth is, the Bible is right. <laughs> and if the Bible is right, somebody's wrong. <laughs> And I'll tell you what, I'm going with God myself. I'm staying with him and so are you. So listen, you win. You win. Watch. Just hang on for a few more days and you will see victory like you've never seen. And you're going to send a letter, uh, send a text or something and say that preacher prophesied and said that we were going to win. And by, by the grace of the almighty, he gave us victory and he didn't give victory because the preacher said it. But he gave victory because he said it. And the preacher 
just merely is an instrument to tell you what God has said. So my time is up. I love you. I'm excited. I know you can tell. Um, I listen, and I know you are, and it's going to be awesome tonight. So join me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> yes, you guessed it. Good old Bible study. We are going to study the Bible together tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Now enjoy the rest of your day and we'll see you tonight.